Welcome to the Out the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. And that's it tonight. We don't have a guest for the first time in quite a while. Like It has been, it's got to be a couple months. Uh, it's, it's like six months. Holy shit. Like we've had guests since like <laughs> April, I think. And we're now wow. solidly into October. So Yeah, deep, deep. Deep into October. So that's good as- though. I mean, these people possibly, hopefully like us. <laughs> Hopefully the people that are listening will put up with just the two of us for an evening. Uh, right. I feel like we have uh, a good reason for just the two of us. Uh, I hope they enjoy slideshows. If you normally listen to the audio version, you might skip over to the YouTube version mm-hmm. uh, for the show. It will be very visual. Um, anyway, this is our podcast about anything and everything off-road. We're going to go off on very many tangents tonight. Some of it, we're going to talk a lot That's about rocks. A lot lots about, about rocks. Lots about rocks. Um, but first, and we'll we'll do our best to describe the uh, the pictures for the listening audience too. <laughs> yes, uh, but first we're going to open with a little bit of news. The Rebel Rally happened mm-hmm. at the same time. Uh, we're going to talk about the same period of time for the entire period of the show tonight, <laughs> because the Rebel Rally happened while we're going to talk about the fact that I went to Southern Utah and Arizona. So we want to give congratulations out to Emmy Hall and Rebecca. Yep, the Rivian sixth survived. place. The, the Rivian did survive. Survived pretty okay, too, from the looks of it. And I think I saw that Emmy said they only got stuck, like, a couple of times. But, like, stuck off-roading when you can free yourself in less than 15 minutes isn't really stuck. That's not really stuck. Yeah, so that no. was her. She's like, we got stuck, but they had traction boards, and they were out in a couple minutes. Mm-hmm. So, And then also, Lynn Woodward and her co-driver, Sedona, placed fourth. Very Ooh. strong as well. Yeah. yeah so we had Lynn uh, back on... God, when was that? Sometime in the spring? That was like early lockdown. <laughs> that yeah, was, when was just it was definitely up. early quarantine. Um, so, and then Lynn and Sedona drove a Nissan Frontier. New-ish Frontier. The Nismo. Well, it's the old body style, yeah. new powertrain, and then a bunch New-ish. of Nismo parts <laughs> added to it, I think. It's, it's a cool looking truck. I mean, the Frontier somehow still looks decent despite being... Uh, old is the nice way to put it but the engine seems okay but yeah fourth and sixth are i mean collectively very strong for our past guests i i feel really bad right now is every image i found of lynn and sedona was like a super tiny small (laughs) image and i was like i want to share a picture of their truck 400 Uh, pixels by by 400 pixels uh smaller it was 300 by 300 oh my god (laughs) so this was the old body style frontier with N- Nismo parts. So, and clearly they're, they're hauling. Yeah. It clearly holds up okay to walk in a fourth place. But I, the, the Rivian is crazy because that's the first time, you know, as we discussed yeah. at length, the first time there's an electric vehicle in the Rebel Rally and they landed sixth, like not just finished, but top 10. And well, and my, my favorite part is we, we've, we discussed on the show with Emmy and Rebecca uh the previous rap and mm-hmm. the conversation we had about the rap was off the record so it, was, it didn't get aired to everybody but this mm-hmm. is a much nicer rap oh it's so much better it's so much better uh, it's like topographic fingerprints <laughs> i'm i'm curious about their their max tracks up there those look like some crazy like my mine don't have a different colored to the spike like the spikes have like those metal dimples it looks like maybe they're rubber i don't know we gotta find out about that i don't know i'm i'm curious well we're gonna talk to somebody who's gonna know a lot about max tracks here in a little yes. bit so we'll, we yes. can, we'll get more info we'll get more info from him um all right do you want to talk about the hummer we, have we can talk about, about it briefly i mean we spoke about it very very briefly before this and there will be probably endless conversations but it, Alas, it debuted tonight. Yeah, so. It debuted like right as we were sitting down to record. So it's worth just bringing up to let the record show that it was discussed. The Hummer EV, we have the pictures, we have the uh, facts. It's not really here because we're not going to see it on the road for years. And the base model won't be available for four and a half years. So that, it's still a long ways out. That's a stretch. Yeah, it's still a long way out, but it, it I mean, you described it great as a uh, as a bloated Halo warthog. I don't so, even I don't even play video games anymore. 
I used to play Halo like crazy. Oh. And I saw that and I was like, paint it green and put like, you know, a turret on the back. And, and there's the perfect prop for the next Halo game. And there's a new Xbox coming out, so it works. Uh, items of note are 35 inch Goodyear's from the factory, can fit 37s apparently. Uh, zero to 60 in three seconds. It'll probably weigh six to 7,000 pounds. So that's pretty amazing. Um, light gotta, up grill. We so gotta give, everybody knows. Mm-hmm. We got to give Camille his, uh, his due for pointing out eight lug. Yeah. Eight lug. <laughs> eight lug wannabe bead locks too on the pre-production vehicle. But I, I think for me, the thing that really is the coolest part of it is the roof so it, it's a absolutely removable front section like full targa like you get in a corvette and then the back section is t-top-esque so it looks like you can I, at least i think it you can pull the panels off individually or they come off individually it's cool it's another roofless pickup which frankly there's never enough of they, they can't um, call them freedom panels but what do you think they'll call them <laughs> It's Hummer. There'll be fuck you panels or something. <laughs> well, does it, did you say something about Watts to Freedom earlier or something yeah, the, like that? That was one of their marketing <laughs> tactics. And I, I didn't read the whole thing, which I probably should have, but Watts to Freedom, the only thing I saw in the description was the zero to 60. Yeah. Which, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're not very free if you use all your Watts accelerating very fast. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I don't just... know. <clears throat> It is what it I mean, is. Okay. Here the we crap. go. Watch the freedom. A driver selectable immersive experience that unleashes the full acceleration capability of the EV propulsion system, including GM estimated zero to 60 performance in approximately three seconds. <laughs> also, they call it sky panels. Isn't the Jeep one in some of them called my sky? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Is that the, like the rag top that's down the middle? Is that what that is? Yes. Yeah, the folding uh, Liberty and then the removable panels on yeah, the Renegade. How do, you, how do you use my Sky removable mm. sunroof? It's from the Renegade. Okay. So they, uh, so there's GM, a power uh, GMC. version of my Sky. Ooh. Yeah. Is there a power version of the Hummer's roof? We don't know because it's not real. <laughs> Yet. Yes. I, yes. I have more faith in the realness of the Hummer EV than I still do in Cybertruck. I, G, GM has I will the concur. to do stuff. Um, that's true. I mean, Brad had the tweet of the give night. Give Tesla a little credit. A little credit. They, they actually have you know, built vehicles that they said they were going to build. They didn't I, build them when they said they were going to build them, but they do actually put them on the ground. I think I was almost run into by a Tesla in self-driving mode coming back nice. from my trip. I was in the right lane of two left turn lanes. We both got green mm-hmm. arrows left. We both pulled out and I expected him to punch it because his lane was going to end on the on-ramp. And from at us through a yield sign, a Model 3 just whiffed everything and almost drove directly into us. <laughs> and if I hadn't braked it would have literally tried to assume the spot where the Sequoia was. Oh, nice. And so I braked and it assumed the spot. And then just, I, I was like, either either it was full self, what they consider full self-driving mode or just mm. dumb shit. I, yeah, or the driver didn't know how to drive. He was sitting there with his eyes closed. Going, Whoa! <laughs> Which, uh, no, no offense, Denver, your traffic is generally worse than what I'm used to, but... This was kind of east of town and shouldn't have been that big a deal, but I had a green light. What? Anyway, sorry. <laughs> off he had to be somewhere, dude. He had to be somewhere. Anyways, we digress. Got so, off on the next so let's, that's enough Hummer for now. We'll revisit it. <laughs> yes, we can come back to Hummer for sure when... <laughs> oh, well. We're going to probably be talking about it for the next four years because the base model doesn't... They'll start most expensive. It starts just below hundred grand. Makes that Rivian R1S look very, right. very, uh, why can't I think of the word right now? Comparable? <laughs> Not Affordable? Comparable. Competitive. Affordable, yeah. Competitive, yeah. <laughs> Those are supposed to start at like 72, 73. Like, I don't think I'm yet reaching that point in my life where I consider buying the $70,000 car, but. The $70,000 base model? 
I don't know. I just, I like the styling of the Rivian a, a lot. Um, speaking of styling, I'm going to, I'm going to jump a little bit in my slideshow to yes, you. Do so, it. And I'm going to respond to this message, but I'm listening. I apologize. The, the real reason that we're recording tonight uh, is I went to Southern Utah. My dad and I were supposed to go to Iceland. That fell through when we didn't know how to p handle a pandemic as a country. And so because of that, we're not allowed out of the country. We couldn't go into Iceland. Iceland was like, no, fuck off. We're keeping your money too, by the way. Um, <laughs> Wait, really? He thinks he's getting his money back. So I'm not quite hundred percent sure on that. Um, we got our Icelandic air refund this week. Uh, well, that's not the, the airline tickets were refunded. It was the other thing that we were going to do that I don't really want to mention right now, just in case. Please go back and listen to past episodes. We talk about it forever ago. Gotcha. <laughs> um, sure. Anyway, so because of that, we, he, I think I'm going to give credit to Zach Bowman. Zach Bowman told a story when he was on the show with us. Um, and I'm also not going to go completely into the story, but he told a story about being at the North Rim of the Grand Canyon. Please go back and listen to that episode if you want to hear mm -hmm. that story. It was a great episode. And Zach is an amazing person describing the things that he experienced at the North Rim. So I told some of those things to my dad. My dad was like, well, let's, let's go there. Had he been there prior? He's been to the Grand Canyon from the South Rim, and I've been to the Grand Canyon from the South Rim, but he hadn't been to the North Rim before. So he started, we, we talked about taking travel trailers. We, t we talked about just camping. Uh, Dad's 70. I'm about to turn 40. Neither one of us really wants to sleep on the ground anymore if we don't have to. Um, Makes sense. Right. And so Sleeping on the ground isn't fun unless you're young, like young, young. We, we discussed taking a travel trailer and I still think that would have been a very good option, but like the logistics of, of getting it set up and communication with the person we were gonna uh, borrow it from just kind of fell apart. Um, everybody got busy with remote school and a pandemic and all that fun stuff. And so we didn't take the travel trailers. So and dad people started, buying all of the travel trailers. <laughs> yeah, dad, so dad called the Grand Canyon Lodge and they were fully booked up. The North Rim Visitor Center is already closed. Um, mm -hmm. The North Rim Campground, which is specifically for just camping, that one was already closed. Because of um, COVID over density or snow? I, it wasn't snow related because it, it, I don't think it has snowed there yet. Um, I think they generally shut down uh, mid-October normally. Mm -hmm. um, the amount of people, like the lodge is full. Like Grand Canyon Lodge is on the rim, on oh, the wow. North Rim. Yeah. And it's full. Now, they extended their dates, but they extended their dates like through the 18th. Like, it's closed now too. Oh, wow. um, so that was kind of like, we were looking for lodging basically. And everything, everything at the North Rim has an address of Fredonia, Arizona. Um, okay. Which, Fredonia here in Kansas is a very, very small town. Like, very small town. And... Mm -hmm. Um, we were, when we were going through our licensing to be foster parents, we had a couple in the class with us that was also from Fredonia and the instructors for the class were kind of talking. They're like, is there anything that you guys want to make clear? And this lady shot her hand up and was like, please don't give us any kids of color. It's an issue in town. In Fredonia? Yeah. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> Well, I was like, at least she's being proactive. So, like, these kids are already in a tough situation. She's going to keep them from being put in another tough situation, I guess. Right, like, right. Which is kind, but also kind of a way of saying, like, hi, my town's racist. Right, exactly. Yeah. But, like, I'm sure not the entire town is racist. Like, oh, I'm course. sure there are some people that are okay. With anyway, so right. all of the, just about everything around the North Rim has an address of Fredonia, Arizona. Well, Fredonia is a town that's, like, 40 minutes north of there. Like it's not, oh, it's not even close. It's not close at all. If you're looking at Google maps. Uh, so dad started researching Fredonia and he started mm -hmm. looking for lodging in Fredonia. Well, all of the lodging in Fredonia says it's 15 miles away in Kanab, Utah. Oh, so over the border. So over the border. So we stayed in Kanab, Utah, which uh, I guess I should, I should be presenting the Google Maps. Um, <laughs> I'm also scrolling. Canab, Utah, <laughs> a town that is mostly unknown to people, except for those who have been there. 
Right. Or who have also looked at where to stay to go to the Grand Canyon. A hundred percent. You are not wrong on like, nobody knows about this place and it is an amazing location. Yeah, it's pretty centralized. So the way you described it to me at first was it has like hour and a half to two hour access to three or four major parks. So and, here's uh, Fredonia yeah, down here. More true. So from what's going here, on with that horse guy though? Horse guy? Oh, I didn't see that guy, so I don't know where that guy's there. At. Yeah, the Google main search. There's yeah, there's yeah, a dude who's, up there. who's he's like but I, I don't, two I don't degrees from at. falling off the back of that horse. He needs a like, beer. He's been there a long time. Um, yeah, he does. So anyway, so North Rim way down here. Okay, mm -hmm. come up, Fredonia. <laughs> see, it's it's a oh. stretch for an address. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is so. Not only is that a stretch, but there are towns between the North uh, Rim and no, Fredonia. Not no? towns. Oh, Jake, Jacob Lake is literally a Jacob Lake Lodge, and like okay. campground. Okay. Like if um, you kind of really get in here, like there's a Chevron and then you're headed oh, yeah. south. Like there's, it gave it a label and where it said like yeah. Ryan over here, there's mm -hmm. nothing there. So that's because there's a guy named Ryan. He's the only it's person literally around Ryan for like 20 Road. miles. Yeah, like, yeah. It's like yeah. a homestead kind yeah. of thing. I don't that's know. how it is up in Maine too. It's like, okay, we're going to name this a town. There's a gas station. And by gas station, we mean one pump that sometimes works and maybe a deli if it's the right time for it to be open. And that's the town. So we did stop here. Because when you stop here, mm -hmm. you can see oh. all of this kind of front edge here. Mm -hmm. And somewhere over here, there's a peak called Molly's Boob. Nice. And it very looks, nice. it's very like boob-like. Like it, <laughs> it was really, anyway, so we're getting off topic a little bit. Yeah, so. also the name of that lookout is the name of the dorm I lived in in college for three Lefever? years. Lefevre? Yeah, three years. Nice. Uh, so... Right next this, to Molly's boob. This is Kanab, Utah here. Mm -hmm. Zion's here. You drive up through the Dixie National Forest to where am I missing it? Zoom oh, in. there's Bryce. Bryce there's Canyon's Bryce. here. Yep. Okay. Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument is all of this over here. Which is that open? Wasn't there a controversy really early in the uh mm, current term about it being sold so it, it it is i don't know if they sh they were selling off part of it i think oh, so part of it. It, i don't know if grand staircase was a, bears ears was part bears of it in Utah. Ears was also yeah and that was that was a sticking point like in some of the tourist shops there was like protect bears ears and stuff like hmm. that like with, oh wow so petitioning to keep tourism basically yeah so <laughs> also protect the environment but zion yeah. For whatever reason, Dixie National Forest is in southern Utah. I'm not sure why. Um, not Kentucky or Tennessee. It's correct. in Utah. Bryce, Bryce Canyon's up here. And then all literally all of this out here is Grand Staircase. And then literally down mm -hmm. here, North Rim. Like quite that's, a bit. Yeah, that's awesome. And also like Lake Powell's right here. Lake Powell is supposed to be the best. And we didn't get to Lake Powell. We Reason to go back we're not really boat people so uh well from like, what i've seen the lake powell horseshoe attraction bend is... would be amazing but like yes. that's a really long <laughs> hike to get to horseshoe bend actually like yeah um and i think that's near Glen canyon mm, cannot anyway. confirm so let's let's start photo essay let's just <laughs> let's just start <laughs> scrolling through pictures yes um I included the come and go because come and goes always make me laugh and we don't have them yep. in Kansas, but they're in like Iowa and Colorado and all around us and they make me giggle. So because it was just always. dad and I, mm -hmm. we were actually able to make crazy good time. And so we left Kansas city and we didn't fill up until Hayes, Kansas, um, which is close to three and a half hours West. Um, it used to be like, four hours west but kansas mm -hmm. finally upped the speed limit to 75 so you can do nice. like 81 and no one really yep. gives a shit people uh, passing you you can sit yeah in the middle occasionally and somebody passes you but most of the time you're passing everyone else mm -hmm. um because even though it's 75 people get nervous from it for whatever reason so yeah um so the first stop was hayes second stop was lyman colorado which 
if you've ever driven Eastern Colorado, Lyman is just there to tell you that, hey, Denver's only 40 minutes away now. Like that's- Congratulations, you're almost, almost there. Right, like after you get to Lyman, you're like, hey, eventually we should start to be able to see mountains. Right, Um, enough desert, time for mountains. Correct. (laughs) That's not really desert, but it's like high plains boringness. Yeah, it's pretty barren east of Denver. It's it's like Western Kansas. It's the same thing. <laughs> same um, thing. <laughs> it's literally the same thing. They just put "Welcome to yeah. Colorful Colorado" in front. Right. Of it. Uh, so, drove to we drove to Denver the first day. Spent the night in a hotel. Uh, had a meal with a relative, and then literally went right to the hotel. Went to bed. Got on Got up the next day. We didn't fill up with gas in Denver, so Lyman was the last stop. Filled up again. This is Glenwood Springs uh, mm-hmm. at the Come and Go. From here, we didn't fill up again until we were into, God, Glenwood Springs, Green River, Utah, um, which- That's a haul. Yes and no. Um, First of all, like, I had never been west of Rifle, Colorado. Rifle, Colorado had been as far Mm -hmm. west as I had been. So, like, um, God, how- how do you describe like, it? So like I'd never been to Green ever Trail. or like on a drive. I well I've been there. I've been to like I've been to the coast. I've been to California. I've been yeah. to Oregon. <laughs> okay. I've Just been saying. to Nevada. I've been to Utah before. Like, but I went to Salt Lake for a buddy's wedding <laughs> kind of thing. Like, I hadn't. I now have driven all but like fifteen miles of I seventy. I seventy doesn't go all to. the way to the coast. Right. It stops in Utah when it right. hits I fifteen. I don't know that I'm going to go back and get those last 15 miles all the way to I-15. Yeah. Because I've driven it Maybe from, spend the time elsewhere. Yeah, I've driven it from New York all the way out. I'm not going back for those 15 miles. Right. Um, you don't need to connect the dots there. Correct. Like, I, I'm good. Um, but, so, we stopped in Green River, Utah at a town that seems to have been affected by the pandemic. Um, first of all, they labeled it the town is called Green River, Utah. The river through town is the Green River. And it was green. So really solid <laughs> naming scheme for them. Like they, it didn't take much creativity. No, they didn't. So, but once you're west, I think headed into Green River, there was a section of like 43 miles of no services. Once you get to Green River, there are no services for 110 miles on I-70. That's isolation. Yeah. And yeah, so we stopped in Green River. We got gas. We hit the Arby's because it was around lunchtime. It's an Arby's attached to a Love's gas station, which is like a big truck stop gas station. Mm -hmm. Um, Yep. Super awkward. Everybody had a mask on, but like social distancing was hard in this like tiny Arby's and attached Mm -hmm. to this gas station. So Mm -hmm. we literally just ate as fast as possible and got in the car as fast as possible. Um, I'll blame you. Southern Utah. Arby's isn't a place you want to spend a ton of time anyways. No. And like, it's a, by the way, you get your food and you are out. Yeah. There were two fast food uh, things, according to Google in this town, Arby's and Burger King. The Burger King was attached to the gas station where we actually got gas at and was completely okay. closed. Ah, <laughs> like chairs so up, one. no signage, yeah. that Burger King's done. Just, Arby's yeah, was over. literally the only fast food in town and we didn't want to go to a restaurant and sit down for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, so we got food at the Arby's. We ate in the car because leading into Green River and after Green River was some of the craziest wind I've ever driven in. Um, Really? And I've driven Western Kansas a number of times and had fairly solid breezes, but like, and I didn't, sadly, I didn't take any pictures at the time and this was going on because I had both hands on the wheel. Yeah, it's kind of hard to take pictures when you're holding on for your life. Well, even dad was kind of braced a little bit because like, huh. The sections of 70 were slightly elevated. There were tall mesas and hills all around. So the wind was like sweeping down through it, but it was Mm -hmm. gusting from the side. And just, it felt like there was a dust storm on either side of 70. And then we were just also being blown by the wind too. Like it was- It's terrifying. It was nuts. Blow 18 wheelers over kind of wind. It it felt like that. I was like, this is the kind of wind where stuff is supposed to start flipping over. And as right. I would think that, a RAV4 would go by me faster than me. Like, <laughs> Dude's like, yeah, it's Tuesday. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And so when you hit 
it used to be that when we hit the Colorado border, the speed limit would jump to 75. We'd be like, Ooh, mm. we can do 80. When I got to the Utah border, the speed limit jumped to 80. Wow. So you can run like 85 and not think twice. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I was, I was solidly at 85. Turns out Sequoia, super comfortable at 85 miles an hour. Can't say that's a surprise. Uh, it also was not stressed when it hit 90. I, I didn't know that was going to happen. How would you know about that? Uh, <laughs> allegedly, allegedly when it hit 90. Allegedly. It was wind aided. Can we put it that way? <laughs> <laughs> Downhill with a tailwind. Uh, no, it was a cross one. Um, <laughs> Downhill with a cross wind. That's pretty anyway, good. If so do that. Very different part of the country than I've ever been before. Like I've been to Phoenix and, and been to the desert of Phoenix and I've been to the Grand Canyon before. Like, Southern Utah was different in that I've been to Salt Lake City. Like, to me, that was the same as the Rocky Mountains. Like, that, the mountains around Park City and Salt Lake are very similar to, like, ski resorts in yeah, Colorado. It's, it's... Like, there's pines everywhere. This was something completely different for me. Like, the you'd go around one corner, and there would just be nothing. And you're like, what the hell? Mm-hmm. You come around another corner, there'd be fields, and there'd be some grass vegetation growing. And then if you look closely, you're like, what are those black things? And they would just be rocks sc- scattered everywhere. Really? Yeah. Oh, that man. is bizarre. It was nuts. Uh, uh, and so, uh, what? so what's the geology behind that? I, I dude, <laughs> I don't know. Because <laughs> it, it literally felt like every corner you went around, the geology or the you on my end changed. I didn't freeze. I never freeze. Have you caught up yet? Have you caught up yet? Yes, caught up. Okay. <laughs> My favorite part is the audience gets to hear me go, I didn't freeze. I never freeze. You're the I one know. who freezes. And in fact, you I don't know. freeze for me. <laughs> uh, technology. Anyways. Anyways. Eventually, we get across southern Utah. We get to the, the hotel in Kanab. And this is what I found in the parking lot. And... Yeah, I know only one participant could share the screen. I'm trying to share it. <laughs> I don't even know how to do it, so it can't be me. Ah, yes. Which the one's The Sequoia new? Tahoe picture. <laughs> yeah. Um, the thing is, the new Tahoe, like, it doesn't look that new. You yeah, because it looks like a 2008 Sequoia. And when you're looking at both vehicles from you know a few stories up <laughs> this <laughs> they're even more similar like look at look at the c pillar look at the slight lean forward of the c pillar on both of like yeah if you blacked out the d pillar on the sequoia it would be really close it would be almost identical but i don't like that floating roof thing that all modern cars do so i'm kind of glad that the sequoia didn't have it so yeah, it's not good what you i had it, know the is, gmt 800 tahoe had it Z seventy one had those black, yeah, yeah, yeah. slotted D pillar things. Yeah. So did the Yukon XL and the Denali's. Yeah, yeah. We can blame them. <laughs> we're really ragging on GM this this episode. <laughs> it's not. Turns out Sorry, we're not going to get any GM press cars. Sweet. Yeah. Right. Uh, oh no, Blazer. Oh. <laughs> oh, dude, don't even get me started on that. Uh, I told a, a buddy of mine that uh, Kia now owns K five for the Optima renaming, mm-hmm. and he was like, "What?" Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. he's got a late or an early 70s K5 Blazer. He was super pissed. You know, it would be the funniest fucking thing if, if you go on like a K5 Blazer for him and you're like, guys, here's my new K5 and it's and post, like Kia. <laughs> that's not going to that's not gonna go well. You know that's not going to go well. Ban, perma ban. Yeah, perma you know, ban for five ever. seconds. So anyway, we stayed we stayed in Kanab, Utah. We, 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 I probably should have run through this a couple times before I actually did this with you. Uh, <laughs> stayed in Kanab, Utah. Um, the first day we got up, it was Monday, and we went to the uh, Bureau of Land Management Visitor Center there in Kanab, and we were like, where should we go? What should we do? She, uh, the lady there, immediately directed us to uh, Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument, because it's literally just eight miles outside of town, mm-hmm. um, and she sent us to a place called uh, Willis Creek, um, and Oh, nope, my my share image. <laughs> nope, not that around. picture. No. <laughs> no. Well, my share image just moved around on me a little mm-hmm. bit. I was like, wait a minute, I need my 
I need my notes okay. too. So, so the, the picture here. So first thing I notice is that the hood on the Sequoia reminds me of the Land Cruiser hood. <laughs> the curvature of the, 20, the, uh, the 200 series. Yeah. The one that I had back, you know, a decade ago when quarantine started. Yep. Um, okay. So this is, so what's it called? This is headed out. This is a part of grand staircase Escalante national monument. Mm -hmm. So what that means is there somewhere in this park. And I don't know that we found it. There's a series of rocks that are stair stepped up. And each stair step up is a different color. And they have like, ah. they literally, they are diagrams of it kind of thing mm -hmm. that I will let our listeners go look up if they're really curious about it. But this particular road is called Johnson Canyon Road and you're headed mm -hmm. back into Johnson Canyon. Um, the nice lady at the BLM Visitor Center, this is the rocks right outside the BLM Visitor Center. Oh, that's awesome. Um, she directed us to a particular hike off uh, a creek it was called willis creek and so this is you head in that that gravel road or i'm sorry you head in that asphalt road and then you mm -hmm. turn onto this road which was literally i love them they're called blm 500 was the road um simple yeah and so you get on this road we found some mule deer uh i think a little before this we had seen cows <laughs> oh oh shit where do i have that image um <laughs> Sorry. The cow picture? No, no, no. The cat, it's not even <laughs> the cows. I have no, I will, if we I want to show you cow pictures, there's a different uh, trip for that. Um, I found like a bush uh, mm -hmm. airfield for a particular ranch and it was amazing. Okay. Uh, Intrigued. It... <laughs> Sorry, I had to. Di I didn't get it loaded to the the image gallery, but so the okay. My favorite part That's of this country ass shit, yeah, is we ran into this way over here, and then the road map took us all the way over here. And Google was like, "No, you should go up this road," and it said like, "No trespassing." Mm -hmm. And I was like, "We're in Southern Utah. I bet if we go down a road that says no trespassing, we get shot at." You get shot. Yeah, there's one yeah. way that ends. So the picture for the audience is uh, it's a field with a sign that says no ATVs, horses, or vehicles on runway strip. And there appears to be about three or four vehicle wide cut in the field in the bush. For I would, I would say it's probably like 40 feet wide. Like it's, it's fairly substantial. Okay. Wide. That's uh, yeah, a pretty big rock. Perspective <laughs> is kind of lost in the picture. But even so, it's a runway and just in the middle of a field yeah there's and nothing there the crazy part was later in the day i was like hey i think i hear a plane <laughs> i was like i guess i was like well i wonder when we drive home if we'll see a plane there wasn't a plane there it kind of <laughs> sucked. uh so yeah that we we passed that airstrip on the way um there was another picture i had in there that's pretty cool though. um yeah I like so did in grand staircase did the Tiers of the staircase correlate to different periods because of how oxidized the rock is, or is it? It's it's not oxidized. It's literally just it's, different rock. Oh, it's different rock just dumped on top of another. It's it's millions huh. of years of all kinds of crap just dumped on top mm -hmm. of each other. Um, all sedimentary, or is it? It's it's all kinds it's of changes. Like oh, it's, really? it's it's all over the place. So um, here we go, slucking. Yeah. So the interesting thing about this, which is going to sound like a weird, interesting thing to you and me, mm -hmm. there was water in this creek. So it's called Willis Creek. Mm -hmm. And there was actual water there. Like so often on this trip, there was no water anywhere for miles and miles and miles. But like this had water <laughs> throughout the entire hike. Um, you never really got your feet wet. Um, and it was a slot canyon. Like you walked through it mm -hmm. and it in places was right up on you. Yeah. Carved by it. water, right? Carved by water over time. And then subsequently carved even further by wind. Assuming. Correct. Yeah. A everything out there is water and wind erosion when it happens. Mm -hmm. um, we have in the Northeast, we have some ice caves, which okay. they call them ice caves, but it looks kind of like this, just 
between, you know, two huge chunks of rock where moisture got in and froze it and split the rock. Right. And it's effectively the same thing. Then, you know, the wind blasts apart. It's so cool though. The slot canyons are like, they're you know, amazing. They're wild. I, I love them to, a lot, but like this one, I don't know if I included the picture of dad in it or not, but like at a certain point I was like, I think that wall's like 80 feet tall. Like, Holy shit. Like it was, it was tall enough that I was like, you know what? If we wander far enough in here and something goes wrong, mm-hmm. we can't exit out either side. I don't know how we're getting out. <laughs> You're not. <laughs> like, <laughs> is, is the reality of... Uh... We're staying there. So this what is... The fuck? The, yeah, this is to me the craziest part of there is... So as we drove in, we kept seeing some vegetation. And like when you'd be up in like a windy area, there'd be very minimal veg- vegetation. As you would get lower and a little more protected, you get some junipers, you get some pinions. We're hiking this creek bed, and this is like an 80 foot tall ponderosa pine. Mm-hmm. That, if for the audience, do you want to know if it's a ponderosa? You walk up and you smell the bark. If it smells like vanilla, it's a ponderosa pine tree. Um, and it was huge, it was massive. Like, there, there was a family going in as we were headed out, and they had four kids, and I was like, hey, if you walk far enough, they're going to come to a tree. I don't think all four kids could get their arms around that tree. Like it oh, might have been three feet in diameter. Like Holy it shit. was huge, yeah. but it also had a slant to it because everything around it is truly unstable. Hmm. Oh nope, I skipped to the next day. <laughs> so anyway, that's pretty cool. To go into that creek and that slot canyon was fifty miles. They call them unimproved roads. They we call them minimum maintenance roads. Mm-hmm unimproved roads of what it was the craziest part about roads and i'm going to kind of jump ahead to find my image because this road that we drove in kept doing this and i didn't think about it at the time because it it hadn't processed in my brain yet the roads change color as the rocks around them change color kind of makes sense presented that way like um, every gravel road near me is the same color of brown. Oh, that's wild. So like you can see just in this picture, it goes from tan to like red. Yeah. And then you're just oh. driving down a red dirt road. So that got me thinking, oh, I was awesome. like, wait a minute. That means I'm, I'm kind of picking up. Oh, did I not put it in here? Oh, the sand. Yeah. The dust picture that I yeah, sent the, you. The dust on the, uh, on the back bumper. I could not make out what that picture was at first. Yeah. Give me, oh, come on photos work faster so it almost it looks like the section of road you took that last picture from was like gravel or like yeah really small stones was the red part of the road the same consistency or was it yeah. more silty oh it was the no, same thing just it was totally different color most of the huh. time the same consistency did that photo not that's make so it? strange i know i sent that to you i know i took you that did photo. and i can probably bounce it back to you I'm not this finding out that not everything uploaded to my fantastic radio. Uh, <laughs> looking for a picture that one more recently. I got it here. I'll uh, download it and send it over to you real quick. Oh, wait, if it's in Slack, I can find it. Yeah, I got it. So was that like a rooster tail when you were? Driving so, down the roads. I don't know how fast you can go. I, on the unimproved roads. Oh man, no, hold on, Ross. I get a better one. That stupid radio. Um, uh, come on, yeah, back up. It's telling me it has thirty-two images that it needs to back up. Yeah, no kidding. I knew do, I took it, do your job, computer. Back. Yeah, I'm on my Wi-Fi network. You're supposed to do that as soon as I get home. Um. On the unimproved roads, depending on how good or bad everything was going, was whether or not we would go faster or not. Um, okay. okay. So real-time uh, analysis. It basically. literally was. Um, some parts of it would be the world's shittiest washboard, and some parts oh, of it worst. would be okay. Mm. Um, here is. So this is when you're on the red dirt road. Okay. And here's when you go onto the white dirt road. Oh, wow. And then here's the darker. And then here's the lighter <laughs> again. And it just, 
somebody described it as you know when you're a kid and you put all the different colored sands in like a glass in the glass and you put a yeah cord? in the vase yep that's that's literally what's collected on the back bumper. oh that's so funny so and it rained today so now it's been turned to mud um oh great that won't be a mess to clean up at all <laughs> it's gonna be horrible i need to go to the car wash go to the car wash yet. yeah yes just save your driveway just go to the car wash it's on my it's on my list of things to do so uh that road at times sucked mm. um super washboardy and sometimes it was just great and then every now and then i'd be like wait i think that's a bigger bump and i'd hit it and it would be a bigger bump and then behind <laughs> me would be a burst of silt coming off the truck or so, from where you no, no, no like it. from the hole itself it was oh, really? filled with super fine silt so you couldn't really mm. tell that it was actually deep until you hit it mm. um i and then it was too I yeah. tended to air on the side of when in doubt power out which is yes. not that's i know and even with <laughs> when we talk with dan that's not always the best off-road thing to do but like i was on a road like it wasn't like right all right and it was not wet. the um the friendliest in terms of like mechanical sympathy right it tends to be the most fun and i uh, i was in two wheel drive for most of it so okay yeah um okay so first day was that creek and we kind of like we got done with it and we were like we could go do something else and i was like it's also the first day so like yeah, let's you just kind of chill this afternoon so mm -hmm. um we we chilled that afternoon the next morning we got up crazy early and drove down to well not crazy early the, the nice thing about being in Utah is in, they're in mountain time. So every day we woke up at like six something their time. But like for us, it was like waking up at seven. Oh, nice. So like we'd wake up at six, we'd go get breakfast. The breakfast, uh, the lady who served breakfast every day was very nice. It was all like prepackaged breakfast. And every mm -hmm. day was like a, a Jimmy Dean prepackaged breakfast sandwich. <laughs> hey, if it got the job done. <laughs> well, I'm like... <laughs> Some people, some people weren't handling traveling during the pandemic as well because they'd go up and they'd be like, "What are we having?" And she's like, "Sausage, <laughs> egg, cheese on a bun." Yes, and the they same were thing like, you had yesterday. Do you have anything else? And she's like, "Nope." <laughs> Which later in the week, the sausage got replaced with like ham. Yeah, yeah, the sausage, egg, and cheese ones were way better. The ham one was just that was not great. Yeah. Um. So cool. second day, drove down to the north rim of the Grand Canyon. This is actually the lodge, uh, Grand Canyon Lodge there on the North Rim mm -hmm. uh, from kind of out a little bit. Um, this up here is a great viewing area. And mm -hmm. then down here they have more viewing areas and then you can come over here, there's a trail right here to another point over here. Um, the, the point right here near it is called Angel Point. Um, at least I think it's Angel Point. And some people were taking risks they shouldn't have been taking just for the gram. Oh. Ah, yeah. That tends to happen at every spot like that. I'm going to well, go I, way too close to the edge and, you know. I watched a fall, father but. of four basically run his ass out on something that was like an overhang. So, like, mm -hmm. if you weigh enough, all of a sudden that rock's deciding it's over and time to join the rest Good of the God. canyon. Like... <clears throat> Not a great move, no. but that's just tourists everywhere. It um, is. Of course. This this section Holy of the shit. path <laughs> yeah, uh, is literally to the bottom of the canyon on either side. Oh, my God. Uh, that's what? That's like two bodies wide and it, with it, high consequence on both sides? It, it is. As you're approaching it, you look to the other side to see who's coming. Like, you can see okay. dad's heels at the top of it. Like, I okay. left the gap. Like, we, yeah, weren't, yeah. we weren't that close. So, this is pretty much the view oh, you get from the north rim that's so good it is understandable why people go to the south rim because the south rim you can see more layers and more depth just from grand canyon village there mm -hmm. um this was just different it, it's not the same but like it's still a big fucking hole in the ground yeah i can't really gather the scale like i keep i'm looking for like trees and things to so like this scope. trees nearby so this this ridge kind of like <clears throat> comes in from the side and cuts a lot of it off hopefully my neck is nope come on i'm gonna have to select what i want i guess i didn't include one um so this ridge That's here on nice. the on the right kind of cuts a lot of the stuff off and actually grand canyon village if this ridge wasn't here you'd be able to see it on the south mm -hmm. rim way the huh. hell to the right over there to the west it's like oh, village like sits over here 
but it's behind this ridge that kind of runs in and out. So this is looking this is almost southeast. Due, due, it's almost due south, south I think. Okay. Um, yeah, it's still so cool. That I is so cool. Love it. Um, we we then went from here. We drove to a place called uh, Point Imperial, um, mm -hmm. which I took the picture of the sequoia because I like the sequoia, I guess. But <laughs> really, it's all of these ponderosa pines. Like it, mm -hmm. it the eek, I kept being so enamored with how vegetation changed like all the time and even the grand canyon it changed a little bit too mm -hmm. um so this is up at point imperial not imperial i want to keep calling it imperial point but it's point imperial imperial um, point sounds very star wars right so this just looks like another extension of the canyon right way out here and this zoomed so far in to get this image is is this camera phone or is this this is my cell phone oh wow camera phone Jeez, yeah sound like it's 2008 wow so this is my samsung whatever bullshit because i'm not getting rid of kids mode until she gets to be old enough to actually understand what she's hitting <laughs> um and then i'll join iphone users on the dark side but this so way out here in this little canyon is the reason for the rest of the grand canyon it's the confluence of the little colorado and the colorado river mm -hmm without those two can coming together to then run down the rest of the Grand Canyon. You don't get the big ass hole in, uh, in the ground. At this point, there was a, um, a, a visual thing for kids and it had the, a timeline of like the kids arms out and it was like, mm -hmm. talked about like when the Grand Canyon was formed and like how old rocks were and stuff like that. It was really good. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's that a the, good visual yeah, we learning took tool. took pictures for... of and sent to the kids and they can actually understand nice. it. So this is looking- oh, that's Oh, Jesus, that's Thanks. amazing. From Point Imperial, mm -hmm. this little girl right here is a helicopter. Whoa. Flying, flying like a through my image, yeah. Hmm. Uh, I think this is Mount Hayden is what they call it. Okay. Um, Are those clouds? Like It It was hazy. I think okay. we, I didn't realize we had some like wildfire haze to it. So this is more really? just standing up at the side of Point Imperial looking out. I think that little guy right there is the helicopter again. Um. <laughs> But That's this insane. is this is kind of the big spire. I think it's Mount Hayden, mm. and then the just the rest of the canyon falls. So like the helicopters would come up through here, mm. we'd lose them behind here, and then they'd move over to this side to then go oh back God. over that ridge, and That's then we like wouldn't see them. Top again. Gun shit. Yeah, I'm assuming being a Grand Canyon helicopter pilot, it's got some actual like health risks involved. Yeah, right. Um, it's got to be a pretty cool gig though. If you lose power, like where do you auto rotate to? The bottom of the Grand Canyon. Like that's not yep. not going to yep. be ideal. And then you say, send another helicopter. Right. So, uh, great road Ooh. driving up to Imperial Point. Like this was, it was fresh asphalt. Now it did say nothing over thirty feet. Mm -hmm. And if we'd have taken the trailer that we wanted to, like made the it. Sequoia plus that mm -hmm. would have been over thirty feet. Like so, okay. they only wanted really small teardrops. Mm -hmm. um, but like all of all of the aspens were crazy yellow. Mm -hmm. um, the weird part was by the time we got back to Colorado, all the everything was gone in Colorado. Colorado was like brown really? and evergreens when we got back. Huh. Um, Past peak already. Wow. Yeah, just a great road in and out of there. Um, I think there's one more shot. It's nice. Why I tried to get as wide as possible. Yeah, like, yeah. And you could just. Man, it's so cool. Even yeah. just in this picture, the colors are so good. The different colors in the rocks. Yeah, the white, the, the red, the yeah. greens. Every now and then in Utah, you'd run into a green hill. Uh, mm -hmm. So we we saw bison. Or bison, or run into bison. Don't run into bison. They Not were good for a car. fairly young from what we could see, kind of juveniles. Oh, yeah. Like they call them calves or is it? Some of them else? look like they had just recently stopped being calves kind of thing. Okay. Like they were really young. <laughs> they were um, in puberty. <laughs> yeah. And then I sent you that map um, to, where I put it in, in Slack, I guess. Um, we took, so after we saw the bison, first of all, we we're glad we saw them because we'd seen bison crap everywhere. And we we're like, they have to be here somewhere. Mm -hmm. But no large bulls with that hurt. Like, I don't, I don't know what is going on. I'm not an mm -hmm. animal behaviorist, but like they didn't have a bull with them at all, which is kind of weird. Interesting. Um, so, or they did and you just didn't see it. No, no, you can see hiding. the bulls. You can see the bulls. They are not hiding. Um, we took that map I sent you. So you go out, road 22 is what it's called. Like it literally is just the number. And you can drive some of these 
So this is technically in the National Forest, not Grand Canyon National Park. Um, and you drive these roads out and I covered the back of the Sequoia with so much dust. And then yeah, you, you turned it a different color. Yeah. Hung a hammock off the back of it and just chilled because this was our private viewing of the Grand that's, Canyon. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's and such a different perspective Completely of the Grand Canyon. Different colored rocks. Like yeah. nobody I know has a picture of the Grand Canyon that looks like this, which is kind of a dumb thing to say, but like Right. Most people probably wouldn't even be able to pinpoint that as the Grand Canyon. Right. Like you can't really tell, like you're on the side of it. But like it was really it's so green. Just really interesting. And while we were there, a couple showed up in a uh rental Euro van. That's Kind of cool. Pop top Euro van too. Pop top. So it's prepped as a, a full camper for them. Mm. Uh, from Road Trip Oregon was the company that was written mm. all over it. Um, nice actually, little drive. I was kind of upset at first. I was like, who else is here right now? But then I was like, you know what? They're in a Euro van. They're all right. Yeah. They're, <laughs> the, it's pretty rad. That thing is neat. I like that. Excuse me. Zip tight. And we weren't planning to spend the night. So I shouldn't have been too mad at her about mm. like she found a sweet spot that they could stay at for the night. Of course. So they're probably still there. On the way back, though, that Lefevre point I talked about, this is mm -hmm. the view looking back at Kanab. Holy and shit. And everything over here is wildfire smoke, and I don't wow. know where it's from. Oh, my God. Probably, actually, yeah. Pro probably the West Coast, somewhere in California, probably. I bet. I don't yeah. know. Um, but, like, all of these white things that look like they're snow are just mm -hmm. white cliffs. <laughs> and then these are all the red cliffs, which – the more we learned about the red cliffs, they don't call them red, they call them vermilion. Vermilion cliffs. And everything is just a vermilion cliff. Somewhere down there, there's a vermilion cliffs national monument. Okay. But literally just everything could be a red cliff. So is this a valley between so the yeah, Point goes down. and then the vermilion cliffs over there? Yeah. So Kanab, is it like, I think it's like 4,000 feet of elevation. And then you oh, drop really? down into oh, this wow. valley and climb all the way back up I think Point Imperial was like eight. So you actually do quite a bit of actual climbing. Didn't realize there was that much altitude. Yeah. And we drove through tons and tons of old fire damage. You can actually see mm -hmm. a little bit here. Yeah, that tree Those is. trees burned out. And yeah. that whole hill to the right over there was just burned out husks hmm. of trees. Hmm. I was like, oh, sweet. Yeah. Um, wow. Just, just yeah, leaving. Leading with the top stuff there. <laughs> Jump into conclusions. So I'm pretty sure this is Molly's boob. Okay. So we it's, took we went to Bryce the yeah. next day, which Bryce Canyon is a very interesting national park. I mean, it's it's got an amphitheater, which is down low. This is called Natural Bridge. This is like it, at 8,000 whatever feet. That's one of the big ones, one of the famous ones. Right. So this is the image that they put on the coffee mug for the national yeah. park service. Mm. <laughs> um, it's really, really cool. This is probably the most crowded day we were around people. Um, and we went every day we went early. And by the time we were leaving, like five times more people had been showing up. Like, well, that's because you got out good and early. Well, at bright. Well, and we didn't even think we were that early. Like we left at like seven something every day. But, like it wasn't on a godly time. No, but think about general public versus 7 a.m. To, to me, I was like, well, even families with kids would be out that early. Everything's up. Like, Mm -hmm. anyway so we saw anyway. some mule deer uh and bryce bryce is just another representation of like there's so many different colors the these things are called hoodoos yep uh dad the standing them, little guy looking things yeah dad dad kept calling them hodos i'm like dad there's two <laughs> o's there's two o's hodos H O O D O O. Yeah, isn't I could be wrong, but I think there's also like some spiritual thought behind the hoodoos. Uh, I think we didn't dig into that much. We didn't talk yeah. to many people, so like if any learning we did was like researched on our own. Um, but the thing I liked about Bryce is you really saw the difference. On this is the white rock up here, and you could just see where it all falls down to. Right, the color of the rocks down at the bottom there are very much like when you think of the wet, like the Southwest. That's yeah. the color. That's it. This is the Monument Valley color of rocks that you've seen in every movie that you can forever, right? Yep. Yep. And I, I just loved how it was so stark <laughs> and so just so bright. Um, I love this guy's TJ. That's a good looking truck. Well, black Tenth California on a TJ. Black God damn. Yeah. That's aggressive. 
Well, and I don't know what suspension he's running because it never tilted at all. Really? My, my favorite part, oh God, though. that's got to ride like absolute garbage. Right? Dad loved this truck. That's pretty cool. Did, 45, did I have a 4,500 with setup? The, huh? Nice. Fifth wheel setup? Yeah. But it's a 4,500. Like, it's heavy duty. Uh, I yeah, was that's like, a lot of truck. Yeah. We just take this off, put a camper on the back. You're good to go. <laughs> yeah, right. That's good looking TJ though. They still so, look so good. This is more Bryce. I love this one because you can see the hole over here. Oh yeah. Like how that does that is hole one of the few things that kind of gives the scope of it because that's, I mean, you could probably stand in that and it's barely in the picture. Yeah. The, the weird thing about Bryce is it's like a, it's, it's like if you made a national park in a line mm-hmm. and the road is to the right and then everything else that you want to look at is on the left hmm. that's literally the entire bryce canyon national park never seen anything like that and you drive through a couple of these on the way in which is kind oh, of oh that's pretty cool yeah driving through the arches you do that in red rocks too outside denver i guess you do do don't you so we did bryce fairly early in the morning jump back in the car on the we were headed we basically had a plan to go to the Coral Pink Sand Dunes, Mm -hmm. which is a state park. It is a Utah park. It is not a national park. Um, Of course, I took another picture of the Sequoia because that's what I do. have to. Legitimately, it's sand dunes. Like- Just in the middle of- For seven miles, they are, this valley collects sand that's blown by wind um, and it's open to off-highway oh, yeah. vehicles. Huh. Um, now, they had a section that was, like, uh, fenced off for the pedestrians, which is most of what, like, this area here is in the front. And then okay. out here, there are two massive sand dunes. Yeah. This one is considered a crescent sand dune because there's, like, a rock ledge here. And so the mm-hmm. sand has, like, formed around the rock ledge. Up and around on the backside of the rocks. And it, it, it gets wider over time i think mm. oh now i can't remember i'm pretty sure i wrote it down <laughs> yeah it grows around the rock ledge so it's always kind of getting fatter and wider and this other one out here in the middle is called star shaped this one's crescent that one's mm. star shaped and it's growing vertically so as the wind drops sand out there on this star shaped one it'll continue to get taller it's like so, building it up from the outside like a yes. pyramid kind of yes and then you could see the wind blow hard enough and you could see the sand spraying off the top of everything. And I was just I'm like, sure that I, felt great. <laughs> well, I, we weren't out there walking. We were a little more on the sheltered side, but like it was just a completely different ecosystem that you would expect at all. Like I know I was not prepared for. Those are just, killer pictures too. The sand up close. I, I like details. I'm not, I'm not great at, at stuff, but I like detail photos. But just these, it just looks like you're in the middle of nowhere. Like, yeah, yeah. I tried to do a panoramic shot, and it was not, not great. But like this wood fence, there's a gap in it. You can go walk out here. In fact, you could rent the sandboards to sled. The oh, where dudes. you go sledding? Yeah, yeah. Like this dude's that been laying like out here for a while. That guy. <laughs> He's still there. Yeah, he's still there. <laughs> Ooh, Earth Roamer. Yeah. So I saw four Earth Roamers and probably shit. 400 Sprinter vans. At least Holy fi- shit. At least 15 of those being the Winnebago Revel mm-hmm. uh, Sprinter van. And I and I was talking to Dad. I was like, yeah, I think those are like, those are fairly, they're not too bad. Like an Earth Roamer is like, what, 20, 250K? Like all 250 the way up to, like, to 450. Yeah. Uh, I, I think their XD ones ago, even though it's like seven hundred thousand oh, really? dollars oh, now. Is this guy just parked like in the middle of a field though? Can you do yes. that? Yes. Cause it's this is in the uh Grand Staircase Escalante, which is mm-hmm. part of Bureau of Land Management Department of the Interior. It's public land. Oh. So you can just pull off this road if you mm-hmm. have the ability to do that and park. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Which also on the road, you can't see it, but there were 100% these little moped tire tracks. On the road. Oh, yeah. So yeah. they so definitely that rode that there. thing into the trail yeah. and then hacked out. So this is a place 
called Buckskin Gulch, which was, this is where the, I was like, I had told dad that we were going to have to go back to redrive Johnson Canyon Road to get pictures of it where it changes colors. And then about the time I was making a plan to go do that, I drove like seven more roads that all had the same thing happen. Nice. <laughs> so this is actually the picture from that I showed earlier, but it was on the way in Buckskin. Um, mm. This couple, she asked like, do you know if this is a good entrance or is the middle entrance better? Like closer mm -hmm. to the stuff. Mm -hmm. We walked four and a half miles. Oh shit. That's, that's a good place. Yeah. To get yeah. to the slot canyons. Oh. And we were like, Oh, the slot canyons are right there. This is fairly early on in the hike. Mm. No, there were not slot yeah. canyons on the other side of that. That's a good hike. Four and a half. It, it was, well, here's the thing. Completely flat. Okay. So yeah, it was a walk. You walk. Yeah the wash you walk where this it's called buckskin gulch like it where right, the river right. used to flow um <laughs> all of this vegetation is called rabbit bush interesting this, this grows and the dunes as well but like this and sagebrush are the major vegetation for like the entirety of the whole southern half of the state <laughs> until you get to the, like the taller trees right that's what the rabbit bush looks like in the sunlight it's pretty oh that's pretty great it's very yellow yeah. to the listener like glows yeah so this is the wash that you mm -hmm. walk to get to these slot canyons on buckskin. And then every 50 feet, you'll find a shortcut because the wash oh. zigzags mm -hmm. and humans went, why, why are we zigzagging? Like, yeah. let's just start going up over. Humans did what deer do and right. just went, oh, I'm going to take this path. Every step you took was in like soft sand. So we saw these, I don't even know how to describe What these. in the fuck is that? It looks like, I don't know if it's from wind erosion or what, but it's like ridges of rock. It looks like the sun baked open a dry rock. Yeah. And it just started to curl. So I don't know if this is like right. a, a a surface layer of clay that has just been baked in the sun in a way and has started to open up like this. Mm -hmm. But there were a couple of hills and it looks a little windswept. I don't know what it is. Yeah, that's crazy. I've never it's seen that. It's like, cool. it's literally like layers of the rock are getting peeled away yeah it looks like if you opened a scab or something like it's <laughs> and then the scab just stood vertical and <laughs> the scab was just stuck there <laughs> so same walk out completely different rock completely mm -hmm. different style just cut lines sideways and swirling there was a i guess there's a a, a famous place in canab called the the wave mm -hmm. oh i've you, heard of that yeah you had to go get in line for a lottery every day to make sure you could oh. hike to that and we were like which is also why we didn't go to Zion because you had to get a reservation for Zion. So we skipped out. On really? That yeah. We, huh. we, that was on the plan of things to do. And they were like reservation. We were like, that sounds like too many people for us. Yeah. Um, is that because of COVID or is that a yeah. normal? Oh, oh, oh. like dad, mom and dad went to Rocky mountain national in September and they had to get a reservation. For, they went and stayed in Estes for a week and had to get a reservation. So mm -hmm. again, completely different <clears throat> rock on completely on the exact same hike. Like, Right. Just such. Oh, that's wild too. Different. It, every time you turn a corner, this. Uh, so on Willis Creek, water the whole way through down through the middle, right? Mm -hmm. Buckskin's Gulch, not a drop of water in sight, except for <laughs> against. This is actually in under a cliff face that water was seeping through, and this was the only. This is the. That's most, right side up. Huh? That's crazy. Yeah, that's that, right that's... side up. Wow. That's not like tilted sideways. Like it's, it's, yeah. this is an overhang and this water is like just okay. seeping out here. Yeah. Which is kind of nuts. Uh, then we finally found the slot canyons. Um, <laughs> after walking That's so good. four miles to find the initial slot canyon, we were a little less overwhelmed with these. Right. Um, right. I the mean, thing I liked about this one was like the way the sun came through here mm -hmm. and just created this, yeah, it's like illuminating tiny little pieces of path yeah. and rock. It's when really we came, cool. And we, it wasn't a lot of time that we walked through this and then walked back, and that, sh mm -hmm. that sunlight was gone by the time we walked back. Right. How, kept, what's the length of this actual section of Slot Canyon? Probably 150 to 200 feet. Like, it kind of goes down and turns. Okay. The, the ones in Willis Creek – were very deep like okay these i was like never more than like 30 feet down like mm -hmm. but you don't feel like you're 30 feet down because you've been walking in the wash the whole time like it's right, literally right. just like it i think the pictures make them look taller than they really were here like they, mm -hmm. i mean still like 30 feet of solid rock around you still 
Yeah, it's a little ominous feeling. Well, especially when like they grow to like they're they're, they're right. only like six inches apart in places. Like it's kind of right. And you weird. Like to think that they'd fall together and touch before they'd fall on you, but like I, I've read and I've seen 127 hours. It's right. scary. As somebody yeah. who hikes, it's scary. So, uh, uh, walking, that's speaking of ominous. <laughs> yeah. Well, walking out, we didn't notice this, but when we turned and walked back, I noticed the white bones like up on the ledge. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're fairly certain it was just a cow. Yeah, that it's, is that is a cow, not even a carcass. That is just, just bones. bones. Like Just part of me bones. was like, because there were some taller ribs like on the spine, I was like, maybe it's a, or maybe they were over here. I was like, maybe it's a buffalo. No, it's just a cow. Right. It's literally just a cow. So <laughs> um, didn't see a lot of animal life the whole time we were there other than like the bison, the mule deer. We saw a lot mm-hmm. of fucking ton of ravens. There were ravens everywhere. Jesus, how, how more ominous can you get? <laughs> right. And they'd show up in like big groups. You're like, wait yeah. a minute. Yeah. I know it's a murder of crows. I don't know what it is of a raven. So. <laughs> Uh, it's an Edgar Allan Poe of Raiders. I don't know. <laughs> but these little lizards were were all over the place. They were showing up constantly. Mm-hmm. And like he's only like two to three inches long. Oh really? I was yeah, like, like much I had more to, like six. I had to like stop moving and be like, let me use my cell phone and zoom, <laughs> and, zoom and click. And that's way clearer than I thought it was good. That's a very frog like looking lizard. Yeah. His yeah, back yeah. legs are almost entirely frog. Yeah. But he was he was quick. Like when they need to move, he was fast. Mm-hmm. So, uh, well, yeah, remember when I said like my snake, yeah. Green Hills. Yep. Like something about the dirt every now and then was green. Is it moss or is that actually just the dirt? I think it's just the, the soil, like the dirt and the rock that's on that hill. That's so I don't know if it's strange. copper based and has oxidized. I, I couldn't mm-hmm. find anything that explained to me what the green dirt was. Probably after this episode, Joel's just going to research everything and tell us anything, Probably. everything anyway. Yes. <laughs> like, Thank you in advance, Joel. Like normal when I ask dumb questions on here and then I get a response from Joel like later. <laughs> uh, but th- it was just, it was really cool. Um, from Buckskin, we went to another place called the Toadstools. Uh, crazy red. I felt like after I came back and looked at my pictures, my Mark One eyeball saw things completely different than my <laughs> camera and phone did. Mm-hmm. um how tall are those in in the 30 like, or 40 feet oh see they look looks like 100 the perspective right. is so difficult on it's anything really, in the woods right it's really hard anything so, or anything in nature really we we went from Buxy and we went to this place called the toadstool so you walk past that first hill these are the toadstools they're they're hoodoos all over the place mm-hmm. um but there's this giant white wall of rock behind them. And then where this cut of red is, somebody tried to tell us it was either manganese mm-hmm. or magnesium. And he was like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I was like then why are you sharing the information? Right. <laughs> if you don't know what it is, don't share. Exactly. <laughs> so really tall, uh, really, it looks soft, but I didn't want to go like, pick at it because i didn't want to be the tourist that that marked the rock like no 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 which there was there was a lack of what would be a better term other than vandalism there was a lack of that except yeah except at the north rim you could see where people had written on stuff on the north rim and they were they were very dumb um you have to expect the more populated and more visited areas will get more of it yeah it was just it was really really kind of disappointing but like here so one side was those kind of taller formations and then this was like the looking west and it's like every one of these was like an individual hoodoo sitting yeah there. and we that could have walked around there wild. but it was, it was starting to get hot mm. um this thing is huge and just right here uh up against the big white thing this this rock I no idea how much it weighs, but it also looks like if I went up and pushed hard enough, yeah, I yeah. could get it to go. I mean, it, it's got it. That's got to be 30, 20,000 pounds somewhere in that I, range. I have no idea. It's solid. I know that much, but like all of the, all of these kind of look like a different type of rock sitting on another piece of rock below that. Yeah. So, the one on the right looks very mushroom, <laughs> very mushroom, <laughs> very mushroom. That's why they're all called toadstools. Uh, <laughs> But like the striations, the white striations through everything, whether mm-hmm. that's wind, water, everything. Combination of the two. Well, and it felt, it felt 
like walking on shale, which is kind of a, I don't know if you, I'm sure you guys have shale rock back east, but it, like it almost folds back in layers. Yeah. And it's almost clay like sometimes. Mm-hmm. This, this felt Very like soft it had and a, brittle. Yep. Yeah. This felt like it had a layer of like hollow clay on top. Okay. And then every now and then you'd get down to like the solid rock and it would be very mm-hmm. different. Yeah. I mean, our, we mostly have the shell out in like Pennsylvania okay. out in the coal Hills. So we, we drove from the totals and while, while we were kind of looking up stuff, it said something about like pra- Pravia, Pariah. Um, hold on a second. It's written on this map. Oh, I went way too far North there. <laughs> I'd gone back to Utah or to Colorado border, and that's not what I wanted. Here it is. Uh, Perea. I know we're running long, so I'll wrap. That's okay. Wrap soon. Just making sure everything's okay over there. (laughs) Wait a minute. You've been here already. Yeah, we have. For some reason, when I click share, things moved. (laughs) Yeah, I don't want that. Here we go. (laughs) Dumb. Um, so a little, a little inside baseball here. So you come off 89 right here and then you drive this road way to right here. Mm -hmm. And that's the buckskin gulch that like you can see Mm -hmm. the sand (laughs) bottom of that. And so the slot canyons are like way over here and somebody like, these are the slot canyons here for a while. And someone's like, there's another way in halfway Mm -hmm. up which wire passed to Buckskin Gulch, I think it was the halfway point. Um, and we actually ran into people who started there and then wanted to ride from here back to Wire Pass. And we we're like, sorry, we're going the other way. Yeah, also um, COVID. Thanks, but no. Yeah. So toadstools are only like right over here. They're really Is not that what all of those dots are on the map? What you- like on Google Maps, I think I'm seeing it like in a two second delay from when you're scrolling, but- All, all of these if- dots? No, not those dots. If you go back to where you were talking about the toadstools, or like all those individual little dots, hoodoos. So these are all, it's all vegetation down here. It would be all uh, up in here for the, the hoodoos. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's all kind of weird. Anyway, while we were searching this up, so toadstools was west. We found, if we came back this way, right here, there's a historical marker talking about people that traveled from Texas through New Mexico and they came through here on the way to California. Wonderful. But this road then extends way back over here to Pariah. See, and I think this is pronounced, that says Pariah, but there's another one that said Pariah. Per, oh my God, P A R E A H, <laughs> which is like a family name, and had there was a town down in here, um, and you can come all the way down to this like loop right here, but these cliffs here are crazy attractive. First of all, that's what the sequoia looked like after getting down to this stuff. It was freaking nuts. Oh my God! But it's like silt. Yeah, it's silt. But like these are some of the most different we we're like why has no one Whoa. talked about this like yeah and it's no, in, that, that's what you want to see that's fucking it, cool it's entire like sides of this valley um the, where all of this came from we had to go way up high to come way down low into this steep valley and of course like remember the grand canyon where it's very narrow yep there was a point where the road was the narrow point and either side oh, wow. was like ways down no guardrails they don't believe in guardrails in utah good um at least in Southern Utah where there aren't a lot of people, I'm assuming. Um, so from that road, uh, so the best oh, yeah, this you picture, can, you can see those cliffs here. So oh, this, yeah. this was, what was it? 585 in and then nope, that's down on the town site. So when you come back here, there's another road this way. So that picture is mm-hmm. actually taken right here. <laughs> okay because this is the wash that mm-hmm. you could have driven in but then this road there was a giant ass rock right there and i was like you know what let's turn around <laughs> uh and i was Before really glad i did because like look where this road goes like that's yeah. up in and that's starting to get switched backy so when 
we were, so I turned the car around. Uh, actually, I was actually over here, pulled off to the side and a guy in a, a Tacoma TRD Pro came out. Mm. Uh, and I was like, is it worse than that? Like looking at the big rock. And he was like, yeah, I only went another like half mile and I turned around. Oh, and I was like, all right, yeah. if the dude in the TRD Pro with rock sliders and a winch and some skid mm -hmm. plates is turning around, I need to turn around too in the Probably place. time. Yeah. Before, you know, before a little adventure becomes a, a big, big right? problem. Yeah. So recovering a vehicle when you're trying to be sightseeing is not fun. Well, and like we had the traction boards, but it wasn't, I wasn't really worried about like getting stuck because of sand mm -hmm. or something like that. I was more worried about getting just beating up the bottom of it on rocks. Like, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. So on the way out, we found this little two track that we started That's to go awesome. down. And I was like, I think this goes to where we were earlier off 89. And dad was like, all right, let's go. And then we got to a point where it looked like it started doing whoops mm. that the Sequoia would not have gotten the link through the whoops. So I'd have been like dragging bumpers up either one of them. Yeah. yeah. So we're like, you know what? We're going to turn around here too. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very much the proponent of the remember stupid. You have to drive this home sticker. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> like I, I want to put bumpers on the truck, but not like this. Yeah. So this is literally oh. the back of it right now. Oh, that's going to take forever to get out. So yeah, it, it'll be fine. It'll be great. For the I, audience. It's not, I mean, it looks, I guess it's sand, but it's like, it's the rock silt sediment. It, and it's, yeah. it's, it's in, is that the trunk, the trunk release? The, uh, so that's the struts the, for the yeah, hatch. That's the lift gate popped open and just like, it was pink everywhere. My favorite part is we, there was pink dust on the wheels mm -hmm. all the way back through to Denver and all the way from Denver back to Kansas city. There's still pink dust nice. on my wheels. I think today I got rid of most of it because it rained fairly hard today and I had to run some a couple of errands. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we're the, we, the dust on the wheels should be done anyway. The rest of it's just mud now. So yeah. you're going to open the doors and it's just going to be just like caked <laughs> underneath all the weather stripping. It, it might be. Mm -hmm. So yeah, now we're going to talk about your giant thing, right? <laughs> Your My 40 jumping. hour loop. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> That's to be determined. <laughs> exactly. Uh, um, dude, well, so just to, just to wrap up, it seems like an awesome trip. And it, it was a very sharing nice that with trip. your dad was probably pretty special too. That was cool. It was also cool that baseball started every day at like two o'clock or three o'clock because for the playoff stuff. So like, right. And they, because the NFL is such a weird schedule now, there were games on like Monday, Tuesday, like every, there was always, yeah. there's like always we sports just, while you're on vacation. Yeah, I guess, which it, it was just, it was a really nice time with him. Um, we spent a lot of time in the car together, <laughs> which he, he was very good at navigating uh, when we didn't have the ability to run Google maps, which I wasn't without a signal as much as I thought I was. Hmm. What service do you have? So I was a Sprint client, which means now I'm a T-Mobile client, yeah. which I don't know if the combining of their networks has aided me in this, but like, I had Supposedly like- Supposedly they're just sharing towers. Right. I had 5G in places I didn't expect to have a signal at all. Oh, wow. Did you download maps, like Google Maps, like just download- A couple a of times, section? yeah. Okay. Like every, every time I would like run out to a trailhead, I would download mm -hmm. that particular map. So That's the power move. And yeah. you said your dad has like almost no off pavement experience, right? Uh, well, see, and that's, I got a lot of stories on this trip. He'd been to Zion before. He's been to Bryce before when he was a kid. His off road experience is my great grandfather lived in Colorado. Mm -hmm. So my grandpa and my dad would travel out here. They would get in my great grandfather's international pickup with mm -hmm. a camper in the bed and basically an aluminum skiff towed behind them and they would go fishing awesome and so they would go crazy high up into the mountains to fish these lakes that for always for trout kind of thing mm -hmm. um but a lot of stories about different lakes he'd been to pulling all from memory and he's like man i'm amazing i can do this i was like dad i can't tell you you're wrong 
<laughs> I know, That's true. I don't you mean making it up? <laughs> that like doesn't even exist. <laughs> so if any if anybody's gonna line on old international pickups, like I think he he has a a desire, I think, to kind of get one of those again, and That'd it would cool. probably be terrible to drive, but um, awful. It can't be good, especially given what is being driven now. But that is yeah. that's pretty cool. So yeah, he had a lot of he had a lot of fun when I went to Camp Jeep. Um, like mm-hmm. he and I went to Camp Jeep, and then there's still something that we talk about that I need someone to find a picture of this because every time I try to look for it, I don't. I don't know anybody at FCA who could help us with this, but there was a Jeep rescue concept that was Remember like, that? it was like the size of a Hummer, I feel yeah. like, but yeah. it was a Jeep. I, there's no pictures of it I can find on the internet. I remember that thing. It was, yeah. it, it was, it was based on a commander, wasn't it? Right. It was, it just, it was find massive. It. it was like yeah, 2000, it. God, five. No, it would have been. Four, 2004 when we saw that thing i search and rescue commander you found it already <laughs> i remember I don't this the... thing because it was at the, i think it was at the new york auto show uh when i was going way back in the day oh now there's there's no pictures of it right uh what the fuck wow what so they had that at camp jeep oh this thing yes oh my god share your screen it's not it's uh can i do that how do i do that do you have the share button i don't know we're about to find out share screen part in my 12 tabs host disabled attendee screen sharing there will not be yeah i let me just send you the the picture i didn't think i did that Uh, an image i guess i did um anyway so he and i have always talked about that you were like why did they build that thing because it would be amazing like that was right after they did the, uh, the first Gladiator okay. concept. So what this is, what you've sent me, is not what he and I saw. Oh, no? Yeah. That's oh. The, I, and that's the part where, like, my, my dad is not, like, he, he'll have a beer every now and then, but, like, he mm-hmm. doesn't do anything else. And I was like, were we on drugs that day? Like, I, he and I both vividly remember this massive red truck at Camp hmm. Jeep. And I can't find it. I, Interesting. I, I need to go through the archives or something of like, I don't think FCA media would have it on their, on their. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I, cause even if you go to like cheap. past products. And, right. You got to look for like auto show stuff or, but, or I don't know. What year was that? What camp cheap was that? Cause that may be the way to find it. It was 2004. 2004 yeah we could be hunting for this for a long time oh yeah and like no one's gonna hang around to listen to the rest of this no, probably not but like somebody has to have pictures of this thing somewhere somewhere um, huh okay i'm gonna uh, hey, i'll do some digging door opening and closing is not great audio <laughs> i can literally hear you just it's on brand for open. halloween though <laughs> it's very halloween yeah Ross thinks he's in a haunted house now. <laughs> I don't like horror stuff. Uh-huh. No. <laughs> yeah, you do. You have like Halloween decorations all around you. You can like Halloween and not like scary stuff. That's true. Yeah. More I, like more hocus pocus, less. Uh, I less can find murder. a 97 TJ that looks like it's been outfitted for a rescue, but I cannot find whatever that weird ass. And maybe it was this green thing just re. Wrapped in painted. red. Yeah. Maybe. Anyway, I don't know. Was, it, it it, to the depths huge. of the internet. Yeah. Oh. If we have a listener or a fan who wants to help us out with that one, I'd love that one. So anyway. if anybody at FCA is listening. I don't I don't think they do yet. At least I know my central uh Midwest rep doesn't. So please don't hate me, Kelly. Um reach out to her. Yeah, I'll I'll try and figure it out. Um, They'll be able to figure it out. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Wrap up the show. Cool. I, I, I posted something on Hooniverse recently. <laughs> it's been a while. Did you? What did you write? Uh, well, I Wyatt Knox did a badass video talking about 10 tips for driving oh. an independent front suspension off-road. Mm-hmm. I thought they were very – it was a very technical video. It was a very 
yeah. not leaning one way or the other video. He literally was just pointing out strengths and weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And there were times while I was driving my independent front suspension vehicle in Southern Utah that I immediately was thinking about the video he posted. So, And he did his job. So, hey, on those two, there were two roads that we turned around on. Um, well, three if you count the two track. Um, the Sequoia is big. It's a large vehicle. Like, like really big for mm -hmm. as soon as, like, I, and here's the thing is like, that was like what will be 0 0.001 of the driving that I kind of do with that vehicle. Right, right. So I understand if people go to those places more often, I was looking to have a more narrow vehicle. Right. But that's why if you live out there, like you have your daily and then you have your side little off-road toy. Yeah. Or like a TJ or something. Dude, they were, they were everywhere. Side by side. I bet. Everywhere. I bet. Like they, they're street legal in Utah. You can get yep. one street legal. Yep. Plate, blinkers, all that stuff. And you can legalize them. Yep. So anyway, that, that was my little aside is like, I go read that on Hooniverse. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll have more stuff around. We've got some really interesting guests coming up. So that'll we do. Be kind of. Yeah. Looking forward to kind it. Kind of nice. So. Yeah. All right. I'm at okay. Overlanding Dad. He's no, not like the one from Friends. And he's on Twitter. Go find Ross on Twitter. <laughs> I won't know until you tell me. <laughs> That's true. Say I increased your follower total by 20%. Probably, yeah, probably more than that. <laughs> you went from four to five, so. <laughs> it's a good percentage. Sweet. Yeah, and, and read the stuff, everybody. Please read yeah, stuff. read all of our stuff. Read, watch Jeff's videos. Yep. And we have stickers coming soon. Ooh. We'll figure that out. Yes. <laughs> stickers on everything. Who wants a sticker? everybody I'll, everybody's put getting it on stickered. something that needs to be have be stickered if you're going to just sticker by itself don't do that everything needs a sticker <laughs> tread lightly <laughs> <laughs> yeah right stick lightly okay <laughs>